Welcome back to section 3, creating a 3D character. In the last two sections, we learned the basics of how to use Blender to create different and more complex shapes. In this section, we will be going over how to model our first 3D character in Blender. In the following sections, we will learn how to rig and animate this character to bring him to life. In this video, we will be going over how to set up the base mesh for our character, which we will later add more detail to. Within this video, we will learn how to use a primitive shape to create a base model. We will then modify this, and afterwards add a bevel and subdivision surface modifier. And lastly, we will add shading to smooth it off. To begin this section, we are going to start with a new Blender scene. To do this, we can go to File and choose New. Now that we have a default scene, we are going to delete the default cube. To do this, select the cube and then press X and Delete. After this, we will press Shift A and add a cylinder. Now we will press S and Shift Z to scale it on the X and Y axes. Once we have selected a scale, we will then press Tab and go into edit mode. After this, I'm going to go down to the bottom toolbar and select face selection. After this, we are going to press A to deselect all of the remaining faces. From here, I'm going to scroll up to zoom in. I will then select the top face by right clicking. I will then move around my object. Here, I will hold down shift and select the bottom face as well. Now that we have both the bottom and the top faces selected, we are going to press X and delete faces. The next thing we are going to do is flatten out the character's face. To do this, we are going to press B and select the front six faces. Here you can see I have accidentally selected seven. To deselect a face, we can hold down Shift and right click on it. This way we only have six faces left. The next thing we will do is go down to the toolbar and enable proportional editing. Here I'm going to press S and X. You will notice there is a ring around our selection. We can reduce the size of this ring by scrolling with the mouse. From here I will flatten out the front. Once we have done this, we are going to left click to confirm. Now that we have flattened the face, we no longer need proportional editing. We can enable and disable proportional editing with the shortcut O. Press O on your keyboard to disable proportional editing. After this, I'm going to press A to deselect all faces. I will then go down to vertice selection and move my cursor above the top ring. To select a ring of vertices, we are going to hold down the Alt key beside the spacebar, and then we are going to right click on an edge. Here you can see I have selected a ring of vertices. We are going to press E to extrude and then S to scale. From here I am going to scale it outwards. This top section will not be very large, so I will keep the scale fairly small. I will then press E and Z to extrude on the Z axis. Again, this will not be very large. To move the motion by small increments, we can hold down the Shift key. This way we can move the mesh a lot slower and a lot more accurately. From here I'm going to move it roughly this much, and then I'm going to press E to extrude again, and then S to scale. From here we have to scale it beyond the previous vertices. If I now scroll into my mesh, we can see that these front vertices completely cover the ones underneath. We can then press E to extrude, Z, and bring it down on the Z axis, and then left click to confirm. We can double check the height by going into orthographic view. To do this, I'm going to press numpad 5 and then numpad 3. From here, I'm going to press Z and go to wireframe. From here, I'm going to move it down slightly. After this, I'm going to press A to deselect and then press B to box select. I will then select this bottom row of vertices. 
From here you can see that we have selected the entire ring of bottom vertices. I will then press E to extrude again, S to scale, and scale it out slightly. Once I am happy with the scaling, I can left click to confirm. Then I will press E to extrude, Z for the Z axes, bring it down, and then E to extrude again, S to scale, and bring it in. I will then left click to confirm. Now we will go into solid view. To do this, we're going to press Z and choose solid. If we go into the top view, you can see that there is a hole through our mesh. We have purposely left a hole for now, as we will be adding modifiers that will change the shape of the mesh. Now that we have created a base mesh, we are going to press tab and go back to object mode. After this, I'm going to go to the modifiers tab, and from here, I'm going to choose bevel. Once I have added this modifier, you will notice that all of the edges on the object have been beveled. To determine which edges are beveled, we can go to the limit method and choose angle. From here, we want to limit the angle to roughly 80 degrees. In here, I'm going to type in 80. Once we have done this, you will notice that we only have beveling on these sharp corners here. Once we have done this, we are going to increase the segments to 4. If we zoom into our mesh, we can see how this is affecting it. I will also change the profile. This will determine how smoothing works. From here, I'm going to choose something around 0.6. After this, I'm going to scroll out. I will then go to the Modifiers tab and choose Subdivision Surface. Now that we have added a subdivision surface, you can see that the other faces on our mesh are beginning to smooth out. We can also increase the subdivisions to 2. This will further increase the resolution. We will also select Optimal Display. After this, we can further tweak the bevel. Here I'm going to scroll in to an edge. I will then change the profile to make it look better. Now that I have finished adding values, I'm going to scroll out. From here, we can go to the Shading tab and select Smooth. To move around our viewport, we can hold down Shift and hold down the scroll wheel to move our object. I'm going to move round to this back face here, and I'm going to make sure that there is enough space here for our character to have eyes. The first thing I'm going to do is go back into Edit Mode. Here you can see that the vertice structure is the same as before. I will then go down to the bottom toolbar, select Face Selection, and then I'm going to select these front faces. To do this, I'm going to move around, press B to box select, and select these front faces. After this, I'm going to press O on the keyboard to enable proportional editing. I will then press G and X to move it on the X axis. Here you will notice that the entire face moves, but we don't want the back vertices to move. So I'm going to scroll in to reduce the amount. From here I can move these faces back. I will then press S and X to scale them on the X axis. From here I will also scroll out to include more faces. The last thing I'm going to do is again ensure that this back face is flat. I'm going to press S and X and scale it until the back face is completely flat. I will then again move these vertices back. To check if there is enough room, we are going to press Tab, go back to Object Mode, and then press Shift A and add ourselves a UV sphere. For this video, we are going to be using UV spheres as eyes for our character. From here, I am going to press R. Y and 90, then I will press enter. After this, I'm going to press S to scale and scale it down. I will then move it along the X axis. From here, you can further scale the object until it suits. Here I'll move it to the right, and then move it down. From here, you can see that the eye is still sinking through the surface, so we may need to further move the space backwards. To do this, I'm going to select the base mesh 
press tab, go back into object mode, and again further move these vertices back. I will then press tab and go back into object mode. The next thing we will do is add a top and a bottom to our character. Before we do this, we are going to hide our eye object. To do this, I am going to select it by right clicking, then going to the menu and choosing hide. Once we have done this, we can now select our base mesh and begin working on it. From here, I am going to move around and then press tab to go back into edit mode. The last thing we are going to do is modify the bevel of our mesh. To do this, I am going to go to the bevel modifier and under the width option, I am going to choose width. After this, I am going to scroll out. I will then press tab and go back to object mode. From here, I am going to click apply on the bevel modifier and apply on the subdivision surface. Once we have done this, we will then press tab and go back into edit mode. I will then press A and A again to make sure that all vertices are deselected. Then I will hold down Alt and right click a vertice. Here you can see I've selected the wrong loop. We can easily just select another one until we have the correct loop. After I've done this, I'm going to press F on the keyboard to create a face. Again, I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. To do this, we are going to press A to deselect, hold down the Alt key and select a vertice. Again, we can keep doing this until we have the entire edge selected. After this, we are going to press F to create a face. Now we are going to go back to object mode. Here you can see that we have created the base mesh for our character. To finish this video, we are going to save this file. To do this, we are going to press Ctrl S. From here, we are going to choose a suitable folder, and then we are going to call this character.blend. After this, I am going to click Save Blender File. 